Hey, my name is Matt Storr and I repair saxophones for a living. Uh, today I would like to show you a modern Borgani saxophone. Um, Borgani is a small, uh, old school, uh, handmade type maker uh, based in Italy. Um, and they've been making saxophones for a good long while now, um, but their modern instruments are what I'm going to talk about today. Um, and this will be uh, a little different than my normal uh, overviews. Um, most of the overviews I do are talking about instruments uh, whose makers are no longer with us, and uh, the judgment upon the instruments has already been made by many others before me, so I'm able to provide a bit more of an objective viewpoint that is more clearly, you know, just the opinion of me. Um, but I don't think there's an awful lot of uh, information out there on Borgani's, so this will be uh, a little more towards the edu educational and helpful standpoint than, um, you know, just adding my opinion to the mix of what these instruments are all about. So, um, Borgani's, as I said, are handmade instruments. Um, they have a sound that is quite unique. Uh, I would say that basically you're looking at something very similar to the old con sound of the New Wonder Series 2 and New Wonder Series 1, um, but with modern Selmer style mechanism. Um, being on the mouthpiece end of a Borgani is quite often a very enjoyable experience. People who like it um, feel that it is very distinct and unique uh, and they can't, they don't feel like they can really find it anywhere else. Um, and I would tend to agree with that. As far as what to expect if you own one of these, are looking to own one of these, or are working on one. Um, as I said, these instruments are handmade, and they're highly uh, variable as a result. Now, that doesn't, just because an instrument is handmade doesn't mean it needs to be highly variable. Uh, Yanagasawas are largely handmade, and they are not uh, variable um, nearly at all. Uh, they, they feel, they do not feel like handmade instruments, although they have the quality of handmade instruments. Um, this is a handmade instrument that feels like a handmade instrument, and that is they vary significantly from one to the next, um, and there can be uh, issues on the instrument that are only present in the one instrument that you're working on. But if you were going to be working on one of these, the main things that uh, you will want to watch out for are, uh, one, the posts are not always aligned. Um, and when you start on the instrument, getting your rod straight um, for your stacks and then aligning the posts is probably one of the first places you should start. And just keep in mind that that job may take longer than it normally does. Um, another thing is that the pivot screws... Um, oh, and by the way, this is... Um, so this is their pearl silver finish. Um, it is not strictly, it's not actually silver plate, it's something else. And they also have a pearl gold finish. Um, and Borgani is very, um, uh, I guess adamant's not the right word. They're very vocal about the uh, their selection of finish and material. Um, and although I think there is considerable argument over whether uh, the finish or material a saxophone is made of has an impact on the sound. Um, it is undoubted that the material that these instruments, undoubted to me anyways, that the material that these instruments are made of and the finish on these instruments is unique. Um, so they're not just uh, saying that it's different. These instruments are actually considerably different. The, the way the metal feels to work, uh, the way it acts um, and the thickness of the finish of the plating. I worked on another one that was just regular silver plate before this one, and the plating was so thick it was like the thickness of a sheet of paper. Um, normally plating is, you know, barely thick enough to be able to see it if you looked at it sideways. It's Plating is normally like, you know, like if you went into Photoshop and just changed the color of something. Um, but the plating on Borgani's, it's like they're actually applying a layer of metal that is uh, tangible, which is, for plating, is extremely thick. Um, so, okay, so another thing mechanically you want to look out for is their pivot screws and the way they do them. Um, the pivot screws themselves are, let's see here, I've got one, yep. 
And there's a great review that a guy named Stephen Howard does. Um, and he talks about the pivot screws. But here is a uh, Borgani type pivot screw. It's called a bullet point pivot screw. Um, and pivot screws are the ones that hold the long rods on. You've got a pivot screw here, a pivot screw here, right? And that holds the rod between it and the rod can rotate. Um, on some Borgani's, they, so, so normally a, a pivot screw, like say here's your pivot screw, here's your key, there's a shaped receiver, right? And it's metal to metal, and the key rotates on the pivot screw that way. And by having it fit exactly, that is how the key gets held in place, right? But it still can spin. Um, on some Borgani's, they have a basically a hole drilled into the key, then they stuff it with cork or felt uh, to get the fit. Um, and that's how a lot of pivot screws were done um, a century ago or older. Uh, and while for what it is, it works surprisingly well, um, it is not a firm mechanical contact. Um, so. What I did on the one where, let's see if I've still got my reamer in here. Looks like I've got reamer. So this is, I made a reamer, but actually I wore it out. <laughs> so I think I threw it away. Oh no, here it is. But it's, it's pretty worn. Um, so I actually took, I, I machined little brass inserts and I dropped them into the, uh, hole in the pivot screw, I soldered it in, and then I made a reamer, um, and I reamed out the exact shape of the pivot screw to get exact fit metal to metal, like um, on saxophones that we are all used to. Um, and I have reamers for many different types of pivot screw. This is for a con. Um, so I actually remanufactured the pivot screw receivers for the one I worked on uh, that had that was stuffed with cork. Um, and this one is slightly different where it still has the big hole drilled out, but like modern Selmer's, it has a spring-loaded uh, receiver. Let's see if I've got one of those laying around. I think I do. If not, I can show you one. It looks like I used up my last extra working on this horn. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. By taking off this key. So inside these pivot screws or pivot receivers, you will find a spring loaded receiver. And that's the same as modern Selmer's. And actually this piece um, either is one of Selmer's or it is identical to it. Um, a couple of these were damaged. And see, so what you do is you take it out, you clean everything up, and then you put some grease in there and you reinstall it. And what that does is when you screw in the pivot screw, it resists it, right? And it basically holds it fairly securely in place. It's not as good as old-fashioned metal-to-metal contact, um, but it's better than cork. Um, and as long as your posts are aligned correctly and actually providing contact at the end of the keys, it will give you a firm mechanical fit. But if your posts are bent apart or if they were installed too far apart to begin with, um, then the key will still be able to kind of mush back and forth. Um, when it is actuated, because the spring pressure from either side will equalize, right, when it's at rest, and the key will be held steady, but then when you press it, if you're applying any lateral force at all, which you may be doing by accident when you're playing, um, you can move the key back and forth, which means you're going to have uh, something that feels rather sloppy under the fingers, um, and also uh, will not give you a positive and repeatable pad seal. So that's another thing to look out for. Um, another thing that you may want to know before working on these is that the pad cups are fairly deep. And the, like say here's your tone hole and here's the pad cup. The pad cups are set with a fairly large distance between the pad cups and the tone holes. Um, some saxophones are more like this when the pad cup and the tone hole are parallel. These are more like this. Add that to a very deep 
uh, pad cup and these saxophones prefer a thicker pad. A lot of modern pads are 0.160 inches uh, thick. The older pads are 0.180. You can still acquire these in many places um, and I would recommend going with the thicker pads. Um, and the distances on from one key cup to the next, and this is not you know, um, unique to Borgani, but you'll find this in many places. The, the, the distance from the pad cup to the tone hole can be variable as well. Um, so a, a good way to do pad work on this is to get it put together, uh, find out where that is, and then you know, select your pad and however much adhesive you put on the back of it based on that if you want to get a nice good pad seal. Um, one thing that is tricky about these instruments is the lower stack. The posts that they use are rather short, um, so to get adequate venting you need to have a relatively high key height because it's not getting vented very much in the back because the angle of the key is so great. Um, so making sure that you've got um, enough venting on the lower stack is probably where you want to start rather than your upper stack um, to set your key heights and make sure everything you know as far as the one in one bis connection uh, is working the way it should. Um, yeah and, and you may find other small like kind of variable things on the instrument as you go through it um, but uh, as long as you understand what these instruments are um, and what you may have to do they don't present uh, many more special challenges working on them than, say, a Con New Wonder Series 1 does. Um, which, uh, like I said, they actually sound very much like, except with improved uh, ergonomic keywork. One of the things I like about these is the shape of the bis. It's really easy to roll back and forth um, with the shape of this uh, bis touch piece. And by the way, you may hear, like, buzzing. The inside of my Airstream uh, that I work out of, I painted like this kind of pumpkin orange <laughs> and apparently uh, bees and wasps and stuff think it's like the biggest flower they've ever seen. So when I leave windows open I tend to have uh, visitors. Um, let's see. So when you're doing a mechanical rebuild on these, um, getting the tolerances to be you know as tight as you would want to get say a uh, Mark VI um, or something like that can be a challenge, uh, but it can be accomplished. Um, just start off with getting your post right. Um, and the pivot screws know ahead of time that either you're going to be um, redoing the cork and felt thing, which doesn't take very long, um, and like I said, for what it is, lasts uh, a surprisingly long time and does a decent job of it. Or you might have these spring-loaded guys. Um, or if you want to go crazy like me, you can remanufacture each of the pivot receivers um, by making a shaped reamer um, for metal to metal contact. Although, you know, that's kind of a crazy thing to do. Um, I, I did it, and while I was very happy with the result, um, it took an awful long time um, to get that right. But uh, yeah, so that's Borgani's. They are a very unique uh, sounding instrument. Um, I highly recommend that you give one a blow. Uh, recognize that the, you know, mechanism of the instrument is not the strong point and if you're comparing it to the uh, mechanical craftsmanship of a Yanagasawa you may be somewhat surprised but um, know that you can take one of these to someone like me and have uh, work done on it that will make it feel much more like uh, one of those instruments under the fingers as far as the crispness of the action, um, the fineness of the action but the main thing about a Borgani that is difficult to find many other places is the distinct, unique, rich, full, fat sound that these have. Um, and because they are a modern saxophone maker, hand-making saxophones, um, I'm a fan that they exist. Uh, so, you know, while I, I may moan and complain doing mechanical work on them because they tend to be variable, uh, I am very glad they exist and, and I like them. Um, and uh, I should be getting, I had two tenors this month come in for an overhaul. I should be getting an alto in um, fairly soon. So I'm sort of uh, excited to, to see what the alto is like. But hopefully if you are a Borg Borgani owner or a potential owner um, or a repairman that is about to work on a Borgani, uh, this will help you. Um, 
Oh, one last thing. Uh, the the rods, some of them um, are, they're made of like a slightly different material than I'm used to, and the way that they get straight, the way they act when you're working on them is slightly unusual, so be prepared for that. Um, and you can just meet, remake rods if you need to. And the shoulders on the rods, so let's see. Uh, a spare rod I can show you. Yeah, okay, so here's like a junker rod I've got laying around. Okay, so here's a hinge rod, right? And that's what goes like in the, a long stack like this to hold it together. Um, this part here, is it focusing? The shoulder of the rod, so it screws in and then the shoulder right here is what stops it from screwing in any farther. Um, you may find that the shoulders on the rods are not um, right angles and you may need to chuck it in your lathe uh, and square up those shoulders because if you don't, when you screw it in tight, if the shoulder isn't a complete right angle to the thing it's going into, if it's a little bit like this, when you screw it in, it'll torque and bend the rod and make your key work uh, bind. Um, so that was actually one of the things I started off with when I was cleaning this instrument up after disassembly was I just squared off the shoulders on all the rods. Um, now that sort of thing is not a problem if you are not making the mechanics perfectly tight, but if you are making the mechanics perfectly tight, um, that's something you may need to do, um, is square off the shoulder of the rod and also check the receiving service of the post that the rod is screwing into. Make sure that that is straight and true and you've got enough clearance so you can screw it in straight and tight without it torquing the rod under pressure. Okay, so hopefully that was uh, helpful, useful, informative to any uh, potential or current Morgani owners or repairmen. Um, I highly recommend you give them a try. Like I said, they are handmade saxophones made in the modern day, which I'm a big fan of because, um, you know, if you love saxophone, you want there to be more of them. You want there to be choices and you want there to be people that are out there passionate about them making them. Um, so I'm very glad uh, that these instruments exist. So yeah, thanks for watching.